Hi, in this video I will show you how to solve a threesome. This question says, given an integer array nums, return all the triplets such that. So a triplet will be a value, another value, and another value, which are not in the same position, so three unique values, that when you add them together, they will equal zero. So find three values in this list that will always equal zero. So in this case, minus one, zero, and one equals zero, and minus one, minus one, two equals zero. An empty list will return an empty list, and a zero will return an empty list. So this question is quite tricky, and there is many conditions and corner, corner cases that you have to tackle, but there are also low-hanging fruits that you can tackle. Notice that the solution must not contain duplicate triplets. And out of this, I can already start by thinking, okay, so if my solution will be RIS, which is, stands for result, it has to be a set, right? So a set ensures there is no duplicate values in it. And then I can simply return RIS. And in between here, I want to take care of several other conditions. So let's logically think, what are all the possible ways where we are able to calculate um, zero out of three integers? So one of the first things, or one of the low-hanging fruits, would be, you know what, if there are three zeros in this list, then there we go, I have an answer. So let's loop through or one of the answer. Let's loop through my um, my list and say um, for num and nums, if num equals zero, append it to my zero list. Let's call my zero list z for zero. So simply append. this number to my z list okay and i can add another condition here if the length of z is bigger than or equal to three then you can confidently add to your results three zeros because even if it was six zeros, it said it has to be unique, so you can only add three zeros at the end of the day. So now you have actually taken care of the values one way, if, if there is um, three zeros or more. Now let's think of another way. I mean, let's look here. We have negative number and positive number, negative number and positive number. So now we've taken care of the zeros. Our other... Um, possibilities to find numbers equal to zero is to look at positive and negative. So let me create a list that takes in positive numbers and a list that takes in negative numbers. So I simply create a list this way and say elif the num is bigger than zero, which basically means positive number, append it. Elif this num is less than zero, then append it to my negative list. And since I will create a separate set that contains these positive and negative numbers. So it's an N lookup time. So I just want to check, hey, is, is that number there? So this is just an optimization step. Too. So what I can do is just do N set of MP. So that's just the negative and positive numbers. If I want to look for a number. So I can now continue. So here, um, if my list has three zeros or more, and here, optimize for lookup, and here, um, divide my list into positive, negative, and zero. Zeros, okay and here to have a result with unique values only. Okay, so now if my list has zeros or more, 
But my other condition right here is I got zero in the middle and then a negative number and it's complementary positive number. So what I can check here is if z, so if z has any value, so one zero, two zeros, five zeros, doesn't matter. But if z has a value, in this case, the z will be zero. So if the z is zero, I want you to start iterating through my p, which is my positive set of numbers. And remember, I did set, so it'll be easier to look up. It will be not easier, but faster. So for num in p, so let's say it's one, can you check if the negative counterpart is an n? Again, if the number is in p, can you check if the negative counterpart is there? So if z, so if there is a zero, and for each number in positive, find if there is a negative number. And yes, if you found that, then simply add that negative num, my zero, and the num. So then we got the case of minus one, zero, one. Okay. Now let's look at this other output here and this other output looks at the complementary. So minus one, minus one and two. So let's write a condition that catches that. So we can say for i in range len n. So in, in the length of the negative numbers and then for j in range i plus one len of n to make sure we're always one ahead and um, so we're not repeating the same we're not using the same numbers over and over again let's find the target value and the target value can be found as follows so what i did here is for i in range of len of n so in this case, for every number in the length of n, start by looking at the next number up to n itself and see if by adding both of these numbers, you, but, but well, basically add both of these numbers, get the negative one and see if you can find this in the positive area. So if this target is in P, then here we go, we have another answer. So simply add the sorted of i, j, and target. So for example, the len of n in our case, which is this, if we take the first example, n would be minus one, minus one, minus four. And P would be one and two. Okay. So for I in range len of N, so then I'm going to get zero. And for J in range I plus one, I'm going to get one. Now N I, you're going to get minus one added to minus one. So minus one plus minus one will result in minus two. And then the negative of minus two is plus two. So is this two in P? Yes, this two is in P. So then this will return to and N minus one in this case and NJ minus one. I can see here it's a mis I did a small mistake, so this should be J. Okay, so then this minus one, minus one, two is right there. So one more time, I'm gonna iterate through my negative list and then I'm gonna take these two values then in my next iteration, I'm going to take a look at these next two values and I want to check their complement is in the positive values. If their complement is in the positive values, then I can return this number and that number plus this, this third number in the positive. So two negatives and a one. And you can apply the same exact logic, but for the positive values. So instead of having two negative and a positive, you can also have two positive and a negative. For example, you can have one and one and then minus two. So it'll be actually almost the same. So if I just copy this here and I paste it and I'll show you modification in place. 
So for i in range len p, for j in range i plus 1 but len of p, the target value will be n pi plus pj. So we're just switching the negative to positive. So 1 plus 1, for example, minus 2. We need to find the target in the negative value. And if you found it, add it. And that's it more or less. So let's quickly go through the solution again. So I start by creating a unique list. As it says here, notice that the solution must contain du no, no duplicates. So I create res and I return it at the bottom here. Next, I create three lists and I separate the positive, the negative and the zeros. And I say, hey, if it's zero, add it to num. If it's more than zero, I have my positive, I add my negative. And then I just do an optimization step to, to, to look up for the values. And then I start with the first condition. If I have three zeros, that's one possible answer. Um, and in here, if I have one zero, find the same positive and negative number. Okay, and in here, what I'm saying, find two negative numbers that add up to zero with a positive, with a positive number. And here I'm saying, find two positive numbers that add up to zero with a negative number. And when I run my code, I get it here. The runtime is 94.4% faster um, than the other online submissions. Okay, I hope uh, this was a straightforward answer, but it was a bit long. Please let me know if you have any question. Otherwise, please don't forget to click the like and subscribe button to encourage me to create more videos like this. Thank you for watching.